Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Herd health is always a top concern for beef producers. So today, we're sharing valuable management tips from Elanco that can help cattle producers in the fight against bovine respiratory disease. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hi everybody and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Russell Nimitz. Well, as the voice of the cattle industry in Washington, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association makes a difference for cattle producers. Every day, the DC staff work on a number of policy and regulatory issues that could impact the U.S. beef cattle industry. We've got an update on what's happening in this week's Beltway Beef Spotlight. This week in Washington, we hosted a virtual tick symposium with our friends at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This has really been a focus for our cattle health team coming out of uh, our recent grassroots policy that instructed NCBA to focus on the threat of the Asian longhorn tick. And in doing so, we've been increasingly raising our voices about the damage that this tick could do to the beef cattle industry. You know, the Asian longhorn tick is an invasive species that was identified in 2017 here in Virginia, and since then has spread to 17 states along the eastern seaboard and is moving west. Unfortunately, the tick can carry a disease known as Tyleria orientalis, uh, which can be devastating to the U.S. cattle herd. And so we have convened uh, folks together for a two-day virtual symposium that focused on the threats that the Asian longhorn tick poses to the beef cattle industry, understanding the mechanisms uh, that the tick uses to spread and reproduce, and then focusing as well on efforts that we can do as an industry to mitigate the potential impacts that the Asian longhorn tick can have to the beef cattle industry. Now, we don't have clear-cut answers today, but our hope is that by raising the awareness to the Asian longhorn tick, additional research and resources will be devoted to better understanding what we can do to hopefully slow down the spread of the Asian longhorn tick and also to better understand uh, how we can protect the U.S. beef industry. It's important to note that there are folks working on this and we are excited and eager to work with them to find solutions. And so we continue uh, to be that voice for the U.S. cattle industry in these conversations. We will have recordings of the uh, virtual symposium available on ncba.org. And so we encourage all of our producers to go and check those out while we continue to be your voice here in Washington with the agencies that are in charge. So. Thank you for uh, listening and paying attention to this important issue, and we hope that you'll check out the resources we've put together for you and how you can best protect your herd. If you'd like to stay up to date on all the key issues and events from Washington, D.C., one way is by becoming a member of NCBA. When you join, you'll get the Beltway Beef Newsletter, a weekly update straight from Washington that provides valuable insights on the key policy initiatives that may impact your business. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. For cattle producers in every part of the country, bovine respiratory disease, or BRD, remains a big challenge. Commonly known as shipping fever or pneumonia, BRD is without question one of the costliest diseases in the cattle industry today. It robs U.S. producers of about $1 billion each year due to death, reduced performance, treatment, and of course labor. BRD has a broad range of pathogens that cause it, and producers can't always control or avoid certain stressors such as weather and transportation that can leave cattle vulnerable. In this special edition of Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll share a wide variety of insights from producers and veterinarians to learn more about how they address the challenges of BRD, as well as the solutions they use to help keep cattle productive and healthy. First, 
Let's visit an Oklahoma stocker operation to hear how BRD impacts their business and what management tools they use to control it. PNR Livestock is a stalker cattle operation. We buy stalker calves out of cell barns and we start them on grass and grow them till they weigh about 800 pounds till we market that animal. We've been in business uh, 25 years. Uh, we've been in Oklahoma 15 years. Uh, we're originally from Mississippi and uh, we moved out here in 2006. There are differences that have less rainfall um, and we have more seasons here. And uh, so that is a big difference in how the cattle start. Uh, we have maybe a shorter grazing season here, uh, either in the spring, summer, or, or in the winter. However, we have more opportunities here with summer grazing being much more effective or economical here. When we buy these cattle, they weigh about 300 pounds coming straight out of the cell barns. And as soon as we get them, we try to get them in a chute and process them and then turn them out as fast as possible. It's important to get them in and out quickly because it's less stress on that calf the, the quicker you do it. If you hold them in the pens for two or three more days or they're on a truck for a full day, it's a lot of stress on them and it's more of a high risk to BRD. Respiratory disease is just part of what we do, okay? And we understand it. Uh, we're confident in our, our, our regime that we use to treat with. We're confident in our, our eye of picking those six out. Uh, we're good at picking them out early. Uh, our challenges are genetic differences in our calves. And that's the, the big challenge in the type of animal we buy, is if you buy 100 calves, they, chances are they came from 100 different places. They all have a different genetic makeup. And so they're all different. And understanding that helps you get them on a, on a fast track and get them going. Here at this operation, they focus on high-risk cattle. Maybe you'd call them uber-risk cattle. I think they do a really super job here in trying to tailor their program, the way they handle the cattle and get them started and, and ready to get out into the pasture. We've had the same protocol for 20 years, okay? We don't change it. You know, it's, it's very simple. Nothing, nothing magic about it. Uh, my, my opinion is less is better at the processing. We try to buy them uh, during the day and process them that night or first thing the next morning. Uh, while the cattle are still uh, in that cell barn mode, we get them processed and get them out. Uh, it keeps them fresh and we're able to get some nutrition in them and we don't have to bring them back through. We do very minimal at the chute and the first thing we want to do is train them to a feed truck, a dog and a horse. And once we get them broke to that, we can control them, we can handle them, we can make our pulls very easy. Depending on the time of year, uh, the pulls will come fast or come slow, depending on the time of year, and we, we realize that and we understand that. And so, uh, really, that's what we do. So respiratory disease is important. It doesn't matter if you're at the beginning of the, you know, the cycle of cow-calf or you're at the finishing phase and everything in between, it's really important. It probably reaches its height of importance in the stalker phase or the backgrounder because that's right after weaning. And uh, so that group of producers really sees the, might feel the brunt of those respiratory problems. And they're also subject to any poor management that went on ahead of time. Still to come here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll hear more from the Goulds on how they identify and treat for BRD in their herd, plus some practical advice on tools available in the fight against BRD. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Weeds will rob me of my investments. The weeds are not palatable to the cows. They will not eat them. Or if they do eat them, some of them may be toxic. So there's a return on investment by allowing there to be more grass available to be grazed by the cattle.
Get more from your mower conditioners with John Deere Zero Series Mower Conditioners. Cover up to 10% more acres per hour with the wider cutting width of the C500. Cut time changing knives in half with quick change knives. Mow with confidence thanks to our five year cutter bar warranty. Get more productivity, tractor compatibility, uptime, choices, and confidence with John Deere Zero Series Mower Conditioners. Welcome back. Well, today we're taking an in-depth look at bovine respiratory disease and some of the effective ways that producers can use to help manage it. Let's head back to Oklahoma for more from the team at PNR Livestock. We've been in business uh, 25 years. Uh, we've been in Oklahoma 15 years. Uh, we're originally from Mississippi and uh, we moved out here in 2006. And basically what we do is we buy uh, light sale barn calves out of eastern Oklahoma. Uh, we bring those cattle in and then we start them and graze them and, and turn them into feeders. And then we'll either sell the feeders or feed them ourselves once they reach that feeder weight. So certain times of year, they're buying cattle here that are, are really pretty lightweight might be 250 to 350 pounds, just come off the cow, and uh, hopefully, probably, have some colostral immunity. So they're running a little bit on the favor of the favors from mother. And so those cattle would look like it to be a really high risk, but they don't tend to break quite with respiratory disease as early. They're purchasing cattle here that have not received a lot of care. They may be thin. They haven't received any vaccination prior to coming to this place. So they are wide open. They're a little older, so some of the colostral immunity has declined. That incidentally happens at about six months of age, five to six months of age. Those maternal antibodies that we want to get in calves when they're young, there's a half-life. You lose about half of what's in the calf every month. And we see that get to a, a critical level in about six months of age. So when you're buying calves of that age and they've had no other uh, preventative help in the film of vaccines, then we start having an opportunity for respiratory disease to get a big foothold. And then you're moving them and putting them through, you know, hauling them through a sale barn, lots of stressors. And then we have the intersection of a lot of problems. And, and that's when we get these explosive respiratory events. When I'm looking for BRD in a calf in a herd, um, most of the time we're either driving them up to the bunk or they're at the bunk and they're either last in line or not eating. So when I get up to the bunk, I ask myself, is that calf looking at me or is he sick, doesn't feel good? And 99% of the time you can tell that that calf doesn't feel good. It's just something that you learn. You, you develop, when you see those cattle and you see them every day, you know their habits. If they're first to the bunk, last to the bunk, and any change in that habit that they have, you understand that's the onset and that's the beginning. And the talented people can see that. And uh, the, the secret to respiratory disease is getting the antibiotic in there before you have a lot of lung damage. And that's the trick to it. Depending on the time of year, but we, we have the same protocol. When we diagnose that animal as, as the onset of BRD, we will treat with antibiotic and we mark that calf. We've got our own little marking system so we know what we gave him. If he's a retreat, we pin him, we give him a different antibiotic, a different class, mark him again and get him out of that group. It's my opinion that respiratory disease is more of a personality or disposition of that animal. He doesn't want to compete at that bunk. Uh, he's almost like an introvert and so he doesn't want to compete, he wants to stay back, and then the respiratory disease takes over because he's stressed. If you get him out and get him with his contemporaries, they seem to go on. And so we don't continue to use antibiotics. Uh, if we can get them to a different environment with their contemporaries, those cattle seem to respond and go on and, and uh, do very well. Talking about the Elanco portfolio, we've got a, a number of tools in our toolbox. 
Uh, when we look at the anti-infectives, antibiotics, uh, there are a number of products. Uh, the product that most people, it's been around for a number of years, Mycotil, uh, Batril, um, and some of the newer um, uh, entries into this portfolio is in Crexa, Tulathromycin, Loncor. Um, we've, we've got an opportunity to look at different classes of antibiotics that we can use in a respiratory disease situation. Um, again, we want to be smart when we're using them. Um, I would recommend that, again, keeping track of what cattle get treated. That has to do with withdrawal and some food safety issues. But some of it is, um, it is to make sure that we have a, we stick to a protocol. So if we start with a, a antibiotic that's in the macrolide family of antibiotics and we do have a retreat two weeks later or you know just down the line, we wanna make sure we've kept track of who got what so that we don't use the same class of antibiotic again. When we need to treat with BRD, we treat with Mycotil. Uh, it's been around a long time and we understand that. It, it works really well on these light calves and uh, it gives us flexibility to treat and have response. So when we use Mycotil, uh, one of the things that we like about it, um, we get response within six hours. I mean, as far as a visual response from that calf. Uh, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't respond, it's not the antibiotics fault. It's his genetic makeup and not able to handle the challenge that he was presented with the BRD. And so we understand that, but that's a, that's a small case. Like I said, we, we will understand that if in six hours that calf is back going. Some of the questions they get about BRD are, what's your new product, what's new, what's new? But certainly I see a lot of producers looking for a silver bullet in a bottle. And they really, I don't know that, I, I guess I would say they don't exist. Again, I'm back to the idea of we've got a lot of tools in the toolbox. They, they do work well, but we can, we can overcome the best vaccine program um, with poor management. So my best advice to stalker producers is to look towards the cattle with a minimalist eye. What do we know we need? Uh, we, we worry about viruses, IBR, BVD. You certainly can get a modified live vaccine with a three-way product like that. Certainly we I think in these high-risk calves, especially if you're using metaphylaxis, uh, a Mannheimia hemolytica product is, is warranted and can pay off. Again, we don't, we, we don't want to use products we don't need. Um, the more antigens we throw at a calf, the, the more expensive it is biologically to that animal. And so I want their immune system to focus on what's important. Again, it's just, it's just a tactic to help these calves have the best experience and get going like they should. Still ahead, we'll have more insights on BRD and some of the most effective strategies you can use to battle this costly disease. Stay with us. There's more in CBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen right after this. When you spot BRD in your cattle, that's your golden opportunity to target infection and its associated fever with a single dose of Resflor Gold, the industry standard dual therapy. To learn more, talk to your Merck Animal Health rep or your vet and see label at resflorgold.com. Animals intended for human consumption must not be slaughtered within 38 days of treatment. This product is not approved for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows. This beef quality assurance tip is funded by the Beef Checkoff. Hi, I'm Courtney Gray, the Director of Marketing and Industry Relations with the Pennsylvania Beef Council. A large portion of my job is on the farm with producers, helping them to obtain beef quality assurance certification. But another part of my job is working every day with consumers who have questions about the beef that they are purchasing in the grocery store. My tip for you today is to obtain your beef quality assurance certification. I understand that many of the tips that are in the beef quality assurance program might be things you've already implemented on your farmer ranch. 
The importance of the certification process helps us when we're talking with consumer audiences to show your commitment to basic things on your farm. Things like good animal husbandry, quality animal care, and ensuring that the beef that ends up in consumers' hands is of a high quality product. It's never been more important for us to have that story to tell. I hope this has encouraged you to want to obtain your Beef Quality Assurance Certification. You can find out more by visiting bqa.org, which will help you find the location for an in-person certification near you, or you can take the online modules and complete the certification from the comfort of your own home. BQA, the right way is the only way. The Beef Quality Assurance Program is funded by the Beef Checkoff. BRD is an issue for cattle producers and veterinarians alike. In Oklahoma, Dr. Timothy Starks owns a mobile veterinary practice, Starks Veterinary Services, and he has his own cattle operation, Starks Cattle Company. Dr. Starks tells us that BRD is still the number one animal health issue that he sees every day for both his operation as well as his clientele. My business, uh, my veterinary practice is a little unique to most because I'm not only a veterinarian uh, and a stocker producer, I owned a livestock auction for 20 years uh, and I currently now uh, spend about half of my time as, a, as, a, as an order buyer, or a livestock dealer, helping procure these animals and put them together for my clients. So my cattle operation, we primarily deal with uh, lightweight, unweaned calves that we purchased from all regions of the United States. Uh, different classes of cattle, some very high risk calves, uh, some calves that are highly vaccinated and coming straight off ranches. But our typical purchase is an animal weighing between four and 500 pounds. And we try to make those cattle weigh eight to 900 pounds and then market most of them uh, to go to the feed yards. The reason why we buy the lightweight calves and, uh, and co-mingle and put them together is, is we can add value to them uh, ourselves by getting their health uh, uh, situation fixed, getting them in a proper nutrition plane, and then assembling them into larger groups of similar cattle so that we can market. BRD is still number one issue for the stalker uh, producer. Obviously, the you know many influences affect time of year and and how how hard the push is or how hard the, the morbidity rate is for us. But year in and year out, that's still going to be the number one issue that we have to face as far as getting our cattle uh, on their feet and and gaining weight and moving forward. So we're in a really really tight margin business. Uh, the market dictates that there's a small margin for the stocker producer to make his profit in this business. And so if we don't manage BRD properly, um, it can become a, a very large unexpected expense and, and take all of the profitability for the next six months of production away from our producer. There's many, many steps uh, along the way of handling these cattle from when they leave their ranch of origin till they land at a stocker operation like this. And uh, certainly vaccination or proper vaccination uh, is important. But in my opinion, over the last few years, the other steps have played a bigger, bigger role in the success of the stocker operation. Uh, it starts the morning they're pulled off the cow uh, proper handling uh, in the sorting facilities, transportation, uh, certainly for us, weather dictates a lot about how we're going to handle these cattle when we get them. And, uh, and without a doubt, proper nutrition. Uh, if we push on these cattle too hard in the, in the early days, uh, we're going to create some of the respiratory problems that come later on. So when, when we receive the calves, we obviously put them through uh, a vaccination pro protocol with a first round of shots and booster vaccinations. Uh, we used viral vaccinations, uh, the clostridials uh, seasonally. We vaccinate for such things as pink eye and foot rot. Um, 
Uh, we do the deworming and uh, the external uh, parasite control. And uh, typically, unless the cattle have a good background of, of, uh, of having those shots prior to us receiving them, uh, we'll recommend to our clients or for our own selves, we'll go back and follow up and booster all of those products again. Uh, we just need to get them ready for um, the next stage in their life whenever nutritionally they're going to be pushed and, and demands are going to be put on them from a health perspective. So for us, uh, to be successful in a weaning program or a stocker operation, uh, we have to keep our cattle a little bit hungry for the first few days. Uh, if we ever catch them and, um, and get them full and get them uh, relaxed at the bunk, um, we typically are gonna have health issues in 10 days to two weeks. So the cattle that are standing behind us that are walking and bawling this morning, that's, that's on purpose. Uh, we want those cattle when we show up to feed in the morning, we want those cattle responsive. We want them to come to us. That uh, helps us evaluate uh, health problems and other issues that's going on in the pen. Proper nutrition or balance in their gut is very, very critical to our success in the, with respiratory disease and other issues. Still ahead here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll hear more from Dr. Starks about his efforts to battle BRD that story when we return, so stay with us. Cattle producers across the country work hard to care for their animals and their land. The USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service is there to help. Find out how you can work with NRCS to develop a conservation plan for your operation. Find possible funding resources for implementing conservation practices or get free expert advice on ways to improve your farm or ranch. Visit the website nrcs.usda.gov today. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Suprevo, the fast that lasts. Suprevo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Suprevo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Suprevo.com. Welcome back as we dig into the topic of bovine respiratory disease and learn more about tools and techniques that can help control this costly disease. Now, BRD continues to be a top management priority for Dr. Timothy Starks in Oklahoma, not only for his cattle operation, but also in his veterinary practice. Let's hear some of the BRD advice he often shares with the producers he works with. So my practice started in uh, 1992. I did a mixed animal practice at that time and developed an interest in more of a mobile or ambulatory practice dealing primarily with stalker cattle. So over the last uh, 25 or 30 years, I've adapted my practice and now it's primarily a consulting uh, practice dealing with small to medium sized stalker operations and a few small finish yards. The value we've added is buying smaller groups of cattle, co-mingling them into uh, uniform groups to market them. So ultimately at the end, uh, marketing the product that we have and selling our name and our brand is where our profit's gonna come from. Most of the clients that I have in the stalker business have been doing this for a long, long time. So they're well acquainted with uh, the symptoms of BRD. Um, they're really good about getting those cattle pulled uh, at an early stage in the infection. Uh, most of our questions come as, uh, with regards to treatment and if I f see any trends in uh, treatment products and what's working well for us. So, As a veterinary producer, if, if I had to uh, send a, a take home message with my producers about this business, uh, uh, I would tell them that first of all, it, it's a management business. Uh, uh, we have to manage those cattle from day one properly to 
to pull our tiny margin out of the cattle in our window with the production chain. We can make five or six good steps in a row and then we can make one bad step and we can lose all of our profit. Uh, we rely on our own experiences. Uh, uh, we obviously keep a lot of these stocker cattle around ourselves and we're treating a lot of BRD on a daily basis. And so if we see trends in uh, our successes uh, in treating these cattle, we're able to share that with our clients and uh, help them be more successful. Probably one of the most common misconceptions when it comes to products and the treatment of BRD, and one of the things I hear from clients uh, on a weekly basis is that a specific product that they're using has quit working. And uh, we obviously, as scientists, know that products don't overnight quit being effective against uh, bovine respiratory disease or other infectious agents. So uh, what we have to do, uh, talk to our clients about at that time is all the external factors and the other issues that are involved in the success of treatment with BRD. And so that's when we start talking to them about management, nutrition, and the other things that go into our success. Our typical treatment protocol is going to involve obviously an antibiotic, but we also do uh, some nutritional supplementation uh, along with that. And we make, we make changes in, in diet whenever we pull cattle off of the main ration or out of the main pen. Uh, and, and treat them, they're going to a diet that is a little more gut friendly and a little more uh, uh, concentrated as far as energy and protein because those cattle typically aren't gonna eat as much um, as the group. And so we're gonna reduce competition, pull them out of the main pen and try to support them that way. Our goal is to provide uh, pre prevention, treatment, or control of the bovine respiratory disease. And um, there are a few products that we like to use that, that historically have been very successful for us. And we'll let the cattle and the weather dictate which of those products we use and, uh, or if we choose to not do so to get those cattle off to a quicker start. We've used a lot of Micotil in our, in our program over the years. Um, I came out of veterinary school in 1992 when Micotil was just launching and it was a revolutionary product at that time and, and we put it into our management practice and uh, we've continued to use it for, for many years. One of the other tools in our chest for treating respiratory disease is Bayotril. That product we use routinely for a first or second line treatment for bovine respiratory disease. We are much more successful with Bayotril when we use it in the low dose uh, to treatment regimen. Product works very well for us in treating these lightweight stalker calves for respiratory disease. For those of us that are out here uh, in the field and uh, working with stocker operations every day, it's vitally important that the, uh, the people in research and development, the veterinarians and the, and the doctors, continue to find new products for us because we see uh, disease patterns changing out here. Obviously with regards to the parasites, uh, we're seeing um, trends in, in our ability to, to do a good job using the current products. So we certainly, as an industry, don't ever want to stop research and development and, and hunting new products and, and new ways to protect our cattle herd. So from the early stages of, as, of my career as a veterinarian, uh, I developed a relationship with Alanco Animal Health. And over the last several years, uh, I've, I've, I've grown to realize that that's a company that is committed to the industry and is trying to make innovative products and innovative product lines. And so as a consulting veterinarian and as a producer, a company like Alanco is somebody that I'm going to want to build an alliance with and a relationship because I, I know they're going to be there for me uh, if I have problems going forward. If you'd like to learn more about Elanco's full lineup of products, including those that can help you manage bovine respiratory disease, visit the website elanco.com. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, more valuable tips on how to manage your operation against BRD. Stay with us, we'll be right back.
Did you know you can get reimbursed for attending cattle industry educational events? The Rancher Resilience Grant helps cattle producers attend valuable programs such as Cattlemen's College and Stockmanship and Stewardship training sessions. Local, state, and national events qualify for the grant and successful applicants can receive money back to help cover registration fees and hotel expenses. To apply for the Rancher Resilience Grant, go to ncba.org and click on the Producer tab. It can be tough to keep up with all the issues that impact the beef cattle business. That's why NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen is dedicated to bringing you valuable news, information, and education. The goal is to give you the knowledge you need to make the best decisions for your operation. So if you're looking for in-depth coverage of the beef industry and the issues that matter to you, don't miss Cattlemen to Cattlemen debuting every week on RFD TV and on YouTube. Welcome back to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen as we continue our discussion on bovine respiratory disease. Now, let's head to the Sparks Ranch where fourth generation producer Dylan Sparks runs a cow calf and stalker operation in the Arbuckle Mountains of South Central Oklahoma. Our cattle operation is pretty diversified. Um, it originally started out in the 20s as just running stock cows and then uh, at that time there's a stalker operation here and they did uh, they finished beef and then would ship it to Chicago so since then we transitioned almost primarily cow calf until the last 10 years and in the last 10 years we've gone more towards staying with cow calf as our base operation, but we've added a stalker operation. Uh, we retain ownership on our own calves. Um, so we'll wean them and take them through the stalker operation. And then more recently, we've gone into more of adding a, a cell barn stalker operation. So we'll buy some higher risk cattle out of different cell barns and put them together into low lots. And primarily we'll get them in and we'll, um, we'll straighten them out and then we'll go out on, on native grass with them for the summer or we can go to wheat in the winter. The stalker cattle we buy, um, we try to buy pretty good cattle, but at the same time, buy value. So we'll buy in smaller groups and uh, we'll, we'll congregate them together and get them shipped here on a semi. So um, they'll come from a lot of different places and a lot of different sale barns. So we really don't know anything about these cattle. So we assume that these cattle haven't had anything or haven't had much done with them. But typically, uh, the cattle we're buying are between 450 and 650 pounds. Well, bovine respiratory disease is the number one issue that we face in the stalker backgrounder segment, where we're taking calves from, oftentimes from small cow-calf operations and, and producing larger groups of them to prepare them for finishing. And with that comes some bovine respiratory disease. And so it's a, it's a big part of, of what we do, and it's a big part of what keeps veterinarians and their producers up at night. BRD for us, I really consider it two different, two different segments of concern. So with our home raised cattle, we, we know that they have a really solid vaccination program throughout their entire lives with cows and with calves. So before we added the higher risk yearling operation, I really didn't give BRD a lot of consideration because we take care of that preventatively with, with vaccinations. So it's really not something we talk a lot about with our home raised calves because as a percentage when we wean our home raised cattle and keep them as yearlings, we're gonna be less than 1% treatments for any kind of respiratory whatsoever. So it's not a, a big concern for us and where it's turned into a big concern is when we add this other layer. So we're buying the higher risk cattle and it's a totally different management objective because those cattle haven't had anything preventative some of them haven't had anything preventative. So it's something that we've really started focusing on with those cattle. And, and I personally am learning a lot about BRD and control and management and treatment with the higher risk cattle. We deal with BRD because in bringing in cattle from a lot of different operations, there might be some pathogens that are present on some and not others. And so when we bring them together in one place and they share those pathogens, obviously we can get disease. We're also doing that co-mingling at a time when the, the animals are stressed, maybe from weaning and transportation. And BRD becomes our, our, our number one labor issue. It can affect our 
profitability. Historically, when we received calves, we would go into the pens to identify the sick cattle so that we can pull and treat them in a timely manner. And the assumption was made that they're sick cattle and then the rest of the cattle are well. We're transitioning now to where we're actually trying to manage the wellness of cattle instead of sickness, which means that we're going into a pen and there may be some animals that are fully well and there's some that are sick, but if we can manage those in the middle better to push them towards wellness instead of spending all of our time and resources on treating the sick animals, then we're seeing more success. I want producers and veterinarians to look at bovine respiratory disease or BRD not as a disease, but as a symptom. It's actually something that our systems produce and we're gonna to have to expand the way we think about it in order to manage it more effectively in the future. When I step on an operation, oftentimes they're hyper-focused on the BRD that they're dealing with right now. And instead of going where they want me to go into that microscope and swabs, oftentimes what we really need to do is expand it and look bigger. Maybe even outside the outside the gate of that operation. So it may be that we, we can make a bigger impact in, in, in change in procurement or in working on some of the skill sets that their people have and, and not just make it a pathogen focus where we're chasing bugs, but where we're, we're looking at it in a more systemic way. The place where I think we've seen the most improvement in, in BRD or reduction in the number of BRD cases is where we're able to improve husbandry and management. And a big part of that is taking ownership of BRD instead of thinking that we're a victim of it. And that means that we look at everything within our system. We look at our procurement, we look at our nutrition, we look at our pen envi environmental conditions, how many animals we put in a pen, maybe to look more internally into things that's within our control that are increasing the stress and de disease exposure on the cattle. When I have any questions with my program or our protocols, I feel really confident reaching out to the Lanco representatives. Uh, I have a really good relationship with them and they're very easy to work with. And if I have any problems, uh, they're quick to get an answer to me. And it's, it's very easy to get them here to the ranch and walk around in the pastures and look at the cattle and talk about the problems or talk about the issues and come up with a solution that, that works and works quickly and works right now. Recently, Alanco made a significant addition to our BRD portfolio with Encrexa telathromycin, the number one drug in the United States for both the control and treatment of BRD. I like the Encrexa to treat for BRD because it's extremely effective. It's in cold weather. You don't have to deal with syringability. And then another problem I have on my operation is I'm out in large pastures. So if I have a problem later in the system with my high risk cattle, I may be two miles from pens and I may be far away from any way to get to the cattle. With Encrexa, I can treat cattle and solve my BRD issues. At Alanco, we're blessed to have such a broad portfolio of not only products, but people and our knowledge solutions on the data and information management side. In the antimicrobials, instead of just having one or two products and, and having to work with veterinarians and producers to try to always make those fit, we go out there and, and we look at what their needs are and we have multiple products in multiple classes and, and we can fit the proper solution in there. But the thing that really sets Alanco apart is we're not a product company. We're also a knowledge solutions company and we're really a people company. We bring the best technical expertise in the industry to veterinarians and their producers across the United States. Now when we come back, it's time for a weather update with meteorologist Matt Makins. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Nasalgen 3 is a new three-way intranasal BRD vaccine that offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, BRSV, and PI3. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose new Nasalgen 3 PMH, the first and only five-way intranasal vaccine on the market. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. From the very beginning, Richie has been dedicated to one thing, helping people deliver fresh, constant water to their animals. Today's Ritchie waterers rely on a valve design that remains much the same as it was in 1921. 
It's a simple idea. Do it right and the rest will take care of itself. We never set out to create a company that would be around for a hundred years. We just wanted to create something great. This beef quality assurance tip is funded by the Beef Checkoff. Hi, Jolie Fitzsimons here to talk to you today about the Beef Quality Assurance Program and our online BQA modules. The BQA program is an important part of the beef industry. It helps to build consumer confidence and ensures that we're taking care of our animals the right way. The online modules are a great way for producers to stay up to date on their knowledge and certifications. We have three courses, Cow-Calf, Stalker Backgrounder, and Feed Yard. All three of these courses are also available in Spanish. They're free online and take about two to three hours to complete. If you don't have that time, the great thing about the modules is that you can come back to them later as it saves your progress. Our states also host in-person trainings. You can find more about these in-person trainings and our online modules at bqa.org. The Beef Quality Assurance Program is funded by the Beef Checkoff. have an upcoming production sale to advertise? Then contact the Cattlemen to Cattlemen marketing team or your breed association to learn more. Time now for Weather Watch with meteorologist Matt Makins. In this week's Weather Watch, I want to focus primarily on what's happening in September. We'll take a little longer view when it comes to La Nina, but September's outlook is first. Then we'll talk about the drought situation. How does the drought improve or get worse across the country as we go throughout the next month? And then we'll have a La Nina look, not just for September, but for the rest of fall too. Now here's a look at the next week or so estimated rainfall that's on the way. It's going to focus on the west and the southwest, mostly the southwest associated with the monsoon there. From East Texas out toward Florida, some wet pockets, also some wet weather headed to extreme cases, extreme coastal cases of New England. Now as far as the amounts, when you start to get to the yellows, the reds, the pinks on the map like over the southwest and some hit and miss areas here to the south, that's going to be pushing two and a half inches and higher totals. That's valuable water obviously. Now let's look at the month in total as far as above or below average precipitation. We did have some wet areas, but in total a lot of the country stays drier than average. And that's all the kind of the yellow shades, brown shades you see. Potential wetness off to the west. I find this area right in there, the Pacific Northwest, a little suspect. We probably will catch some moisture, but as far as it being a surplus, I don't think that's going to be happening in September. As you look at East Texas out toward Florida, certainly will break even, and in some cases there'll be a surplus there. It's all going to come down to how these thunderstorms behave for the West. Do they spread out? Do they linger a little bit? As of right now, it looks to be kind of a break-even month out to the west. As you look at temperatures, it's going to be very hot for the northwest, the northern plains, into the central plains, parts of the Rockies, cooler than average conditions, somewhat in those wetter areas out across the southeastern U.S. What does this mean in terms of La Nina? Does this mean that anything's changing there? No. When you look at where La Nina forms, it's where the ocean conditions are colder than average here in the Pacific. That has not changed for a long time, and it is not going to change for the remainder of September or fall. La Nina will remain in place as we go throughout the next season, as we go throughout autumn. What does this mean in terms of drought now? Well, drought persists in the gray areas. That's going to be most areas. Possible improvements where we have some green, that's where we have the rainfall on the way, but it will get worse. Northern Plains, Corn Belt, and the New England states do have higher drought numbers ahead. We'll see you on the next Weather Watch. I'm Matt Makins. Well, today you've certainly heard a lot of great information about how to manage a continuing problem facing beef producers today, bovine respiratory disease. We want to thank Russ and Jacob Gould, Dylan Sparks, and veterinarians Dr. Tehar, Dr. Faulkner, and Dr. Starks for their insights and expertise. And remember, if you want to learn more about how to manage BRD, 
be sure to talk with your herd health veterinarian or Elanco representative, or you can visit the website elanco.com. You can also visit with the Elanco team at the upcoming Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. No doubt it's still one of the great educational opportunity for thousands of cattlemen and women from across the country. And it's not too early to start making plans to attend next year's event, which by the way will take place in New Orleans, Louisiana, February 1st through the 3rd. It'll be an outstanding opportunity to learn, to check out new products, and of course to connect with your fellow producers from around the country. You can find all the details you need to be part of the action in New Orleans at the website convention.ncba.org. Do you want to rewatch an episode of Cattlemen to Cattlemen or even just catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit our YouTube page. You'll find replays of all of our shows filled with educational segments and producer profiles from across the country. So check us out on YouTube today. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for spending time with us, and we'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.